I'm founding president of IDEAS, uh, Institute for Democracy and Economic Affairs, uh, which is a public policy uh, institute, a think tank that uh, tries to um, inform, uh, maybe even influence um, uh, the formulation of public policy in Malaysia. Um, it's absolutely vital. I mean, Malaysia is a country where the majority of the population is youth. I mean, if you look at the disparity between the age of the policymakers and the age of the majority of the citizens, it's very wide. It's, it's extremely important because if we don't uh, address this, um, you know, on what, on what basis does a government uh, operate if it's not, uh, it doesn't take heed? of uh, the um, you know, aspirations of the majority of its population. Mm. What I would say to policymakers is um, listen more, understand that your constituents may be of a different background as you, uh, may have different interests, and you serve them. But right. in the long run, if there is a disconnect, or if there is too big a disconnect between those who are governing and those who are governed, uh, then um, you know, we can see greater instability. There is room for reform um, institutionally that will make um, government uh, more responsive to citizens. Uh, now, one, one route is through decentralization, and it's something that we at Ideas have long talked about. Well, the, um, Decisions affecting local communities should be made at the local level. Decisions affecting states should be at the state level. So I think this, if we were to adopt this, um, or rather if we were to return to this um, logic of federation and decentralization, what we should, what the theory is, what we'll see is more responsive policy making. Because it's the people at the local level who will be able to, you know, um, you know there'll be competition among different, uh, across different states, across different localities, um, and uh, decisions will be made differently at local level. Uh, I think this is, that's fundamentally a good thing. Um, committees, this is something else that we've been talking about for a long time. Committees in Parliament. So, um, you know, from my experience working in, in the UK um, and, you know, seeing other parliaments at work, um, you have, you know, in, when any bill, when any piece of legislation uh, comes up, there is a consultative, uh, there's a consultative process uh, through the committee system. So whether it's a committee on transport or health, what happens is uh, you have MPs who are members of the committee from all the parties uh, who invite public members of the public and you know, as well as experts uh, to um, come and look at the um, at the legislation. And I think that is a very good way to increase the transparency. Uh, and improve the policy making process of any particular piece of legislation. Um, well, one of the um, tricky things about sort of measuring the impact of certain initiatives, I mean, you know, me being uh, here at Ideas, it's very clear that um, changing policies is, is like steering a giant ship, right? I mean, a lot of people work very hard for many years to try and steer this ship in one direction, and by the time it's reached that direction, the people involved have moved on, right? It's a very long process, um, and change is incremental. Uh, it takes time for ideas to filter up through to political parties and ultimately reach the um, decision makers. Is that I realized that there's a disparity across ASEAN of the attention given to the uh, voice of young people as well. And it's very interesting. Some in, the, in, the, in the countries that have seen um, conflict and war, um, I've noticed that um, young people really do voice out uh, their um, you know, aspirations, um, you know, what they expect from the government, uh, or what they expect um, their rights should be, uh, much more confidently, I think than in some of the more you know, established, stable countries. The exuberance and the vitality uh, of the confidence of young people in Cambodia, in Laos, in Vietnam, uh, in, you know, and they, uh, I think, you know, their, their economies are opening up, they're becoming more competitive, um, they're gonna be sort of centers of innovation eventually, and I think we need to be uh, attuned to that as well, and we need to be able to 
keep up with that with that trend.